organisations falling within the scope of the Blue Card system are required to develop and implement child and youth risk management strategies which address eight minimum requirements. This video will guide you through the eighth and final of the minimum requirements, which is the requirement to have strategies for communication and support. As we have emphasised throughout this video series, it is essential for your organisation to have carefully drafted policies and procedures which are relevant to assisting with reducing the risk of harm to children. These strategies will be most effective when they have been successfully communicated to all people involved in your organisation. It is critical for your communication and support strategies to include written information for parents, employees and volunteers that includes details of your organisation's risk management strategy or where the strategy can be accessed, and training materials for employees and volunteers which help identify risks of harm and how to handle disclosures or suspicions of harm and outline your organisation's risk management strategy. So why do you need to have a strategy for communication and support? Well, an effective strategy for communication and support will ensure that all people in your organisation are aware of their responsibilities and understand what is acceptable behaviour for interacting with children, enable people to feel comfortable addressing issues of concern, highlight the importance of your organisation's commitment to protecting the safety and well-being of children in your service environment, and reduce the likelihood of breaches of your risk management strategy. So how should you go about drafting this strategy? A good place to start is to consider what methods of communication and support are suitable for your organisation and involve people in your organisation in developing them. If parents, carers, employees, volunteers, children and young people are actively involved in developing your organisation's policies and procedures, they will be more likely to accept, support and adhere to them. This will in turn build a culture which recognises and values the importance of upholding safeguards for children. Some practical ways to achieve this could be running a brainstorming session to identify the risks which are particular to your service environment and thinking about ways which those risks can be reduced, presenting your strategy to all people involved in your organisation, particularly parents, and actively seeking their feedback, and perhaps featuring a policy of the month where people in your organisation are encouraged to become familiar with the policy and provide feedback they consider appropriate. In addition, you should consider strategies to ensure effective communication about your risk management strategy within your organisation. For example, you might want to provide compulsory induction covering the risk management policies and procedures for all paid employees and volunteers, deliver regular information sessions for people involved with your organisation in relation to your risk management strategy. These could potentially be incorporated into other sessions you hold for staff and parents. Implement specific strategies to ensure the participation of children and young people, to make sure they understand how to keep themselves safe and what to do if they feel unsafe. Provide information about the various policies and procedures in your newsletter or other publication and seek input and feedback. Utilise bulletin boards and posters to visually promote your organisation's commitment to safe and supportive environments for children and young people. Provide a copy of your risk management strategy or information about where it can be accessed as part of any resources you provide to people. Schedule regular and mandatory training for staff in relation to various policies and procedures which make up your strategy, with a particular focus on managing disclosures or suspicions of harm. Consider if there are any aspects of your strategy which can be incorporated within professional development and performance plans, and provide relevant individuals with information to understand their obligations as a blue card holder. Remember, if everyone understands the expected standards of behaviour, 
it will be easier to identify and remedy issues quickly. Now, let's talk about support. Staff may require support to deal with issues such as behaviour management, stress, conflict, bullying, child protection concerns, breaches of the risk management strategy, and dealing with disclosures or suspicions of harm. You should have mechanisms to support your staff and actively communicate the types of support services you offer. For example, you may wish to appoint internal support service officers or workplace health and safety officers who can provide support to staff if necessary and perhaps partner with external employee assistance programs. Other people involved in your organisation, such as volunteers, parents and children and young people, may also require support to assist with managing concerns. Your organisation should ensure that it is prepared to provide or facilitate required support services to all people involved in your organisation. To further assist you in developing and implementing effective child and youth risk management strategies, a toolkit which is available on the risk management page of the Blue Card Services website has been developed to provide information and guidance on the eight minimum requirements. Remember, safe service environments don't just happen, they require ongoing planning, commitment and maintenance. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this requirement of child and youth risk management strategies. We hope you found this video useful and we encourage you to watch the remaining videos on offer from the Blue Card Services Learning Portal.